back is yeah, okay? okay. <laughs> wow, what a room for the flying cars, of which we don't want to talk about today, flying cars, do we? We're going to change it. Yeah. Um, so before we get started, I thought I'd give everybody 60 seconds to sort of talk about themselves. And Alexander has a very cool video he wants to show, so we're going to make you go last. Um, so I have with me on stage uh, Tobias from Airbus. I have Francois Chopard from Starbucks, Starburst. Yeah. And Alexander from Volocopter. So we've got three great people today to talk about urban air mobility, not flying cars. We're not going to talk about flying cars. OK, do you want to go first? Sure, thanks. And it's Matthias. Oh, God, <laughs> Danish, 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 yes. That's OK. <laughs> um, well, um, thanks for having me. And uh, I'll chat very quickly about Airbus, 60 seconds. urban <laughs> air mobility, um, transportation in the third dimension, um, a faster <laughs> way uh, to get from A to B in our congested cities. We think that's awesome. We think it will be irresistible. Um, we think there will be no shortage of demand. It's all about the supply. So we're developing the technology that will make it possible. Um, we're developing machines. We're developing infrastructure concept. We're developing uh, airspace systems. We're um, testing how it will be uh, for passengers uh, right now in Sao Paulo with digital interfaces. Because when uh, such a radical new uh, way of getting around uh, has to come to the market. A lot of things have to be solved, and we, as a big company in Airbus, are doing everything we can across this emerging value chain. Okay, thank you. Do you want to give us a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah, so um, Starburst is the number one accelerator for um, aerospace startups, and um, air mobility is uh, one of the subjects that we are working on. We uh, have been operating for the last five years, uh, working a lot with these uh, emerging startups. Um, and it's a very exciting time to work on aerospace. Uh, we are pushing that subject, making uh, people understand that there's more and more startups that are developing new type of uh, uh, air vehicle, whether it's a volocopter or some others, um, whether it's supersonic jets, hybrid aircraft, or uh, even space rockets. So, um, yeah, we're very happy to uh, talk about this subject uh, today, and uh, yeah, let's have fun. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna show. Alex is gonna show a video. Um, can we show Alex's video, please? Please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm <clears throat> I'm Alex. I'm the co-founder of Volocopter, a company based in Germany, and we are believing on on-demand mobility in the future in the air. So what you see in the video is what we think can happen in the next three or five years. And we already flew uh, five weeks ago in inner space of Dubai City with this kind of aircraft. It was the first full autonomous test of an air taxi worldwide five weeks ago. So see the video and enjoy. This is our aircraft, the Volocopter. And you just finished a pilot, a test with this, right, in Dubai? That was a fully autonomous okay. flight uh, uh, in urban uh, space. So while, while we're showing this video, I thought we had a discussion earlier about how all three of us actually do not like the term flying cars. And um, I think I'd like to put a line in the sand as a journalist because I'm sort of tired of seeing articles about flying cars when actually I think there's lots of different variations of uh, urban air mobility, if we could talk about that for just a second. So there's your multi-copter, right? There's the car that turns into a flying car. <laughs> and there's your, your pop-up, right? The, yeah. That's more like a, a concept. Yeah, a concept, right? Which is Wh would nice. be more like a start as a multi-copter, but then turn into a plane, right? Yeah, so it's okay. not really a flying car, but okay. it can be a car yeah. and it can't fly. But why do we have to use this term flying car? Because it's not actually a reality, right? I think it's something media came up with. Okay, we, I know, we're horrible. Um, but but uh, just to come back on your point yeah. here, um, so there's uh, more than 100 startups that are working on that concept, and, okay. and large corporation, obviously, and we categorize that into five different concepts. Okay. Uh, you have the, the, the Jetpack, then there's a couple of startups doing I that. I forgot that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have the, the uh, Overdraft, so a couple of, uh, uh, of uh, electrical, uh, and then it's like a motorcycle. Okay. You have the, 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 the car like Aeromobile or Sierra Fugia that are really cars mm -hmm. transforming into yeah. planes. And then you have the, the new type of car that we call um, electric, vertical, and take off, okay. take off and landing vehicle. And that's really the, the, the subject where we are focusing today because okay. it allows you to 
um, take off vertically, and so from mostly any point, yeah. go very quickly to the next one, and then land without any uh, need for a runway or a strip. And that's but, what we really what we're looking for. Okay, Alex, I know you have strong feelings about this. Do you want to talk about these three areas and really what you want to do with your multi-copter? So our multi-copter concept is uh, for one short distance in urban space. Okay. So we think in future we have a lot of different concepts for different missions. So it's about uh, uh, electric propulsion is very important in that. And we think we have the perfect uh, concept for uh, doing it in urban space. Okay. And we want to do it also as a public transportation system, not uh, as a op private ownership thing. So it's uh, more than uh, public transportation. And we will have, in the beginning, we have point-to-point -point, uh, lines where you solve some, some bottlenecks. But later, you will have it all on demand. So you can call your volocopter or something else mm -hmm. from, from Airbus or something else. And uh, then you can fly to the destination you want. So what, what kind of technology do we need to put into place to actually make maybe the first tier, maybe the first level of this even happen? What, what has to happen first? Well, I think actually here at the Web Summit, it's the same themes <laughs> that impact us all. It's yeah. automation, yeah. autonomy, yeah. it's electrification, mm -hmm. it's connectivity, and it's new materials, mm -hmm. right? All of these things converge, mm -hmm. and boom, you do automatic air transport. So do you think the public has a different idea of what a flying car or urban air mobility is versus what this room or maybe you three think it is? Uh, we, we spoke to people. We did yeah. uh, consumer research all over the world. Okay. We did focus groups. And tell me, what, what did you learn from that? People were excited. They're like, yeah, but, I mean, finally. What are, what are they excited for? The ability to go out and hail a flying car like Uber? Or are they excited because they can get in a... In a multi-copter that's like a drone and fly to the Long Island for the weekend? It's just about getting faster from A to B, more okay. reliably, okay. and especially when you go to an important meeting, or maybe to the airport, yeah. where you get a lot of stress, <laughs> But if so you miss your flight or meeting. Well, that's true, but... And, and then you, you have to understand that uh, this service already exists. Uh, in, a, in a city like Sao Paulo, yeah. uh, there's um, 300 different helipad. There's 400 helicopters. Yep. Um, Airbus with Boom has already a service that yep. way you can use these helicopters to go point, point A to point B. What's really happening now is that a couple of things. We are talking about electric, uh, and what brings electric is um, is much cheaper flights. Uh, so in, instead of having this very complex mm -hmm. machine, very expensive to maintain, now with electric, um, energy cheap and, and maintenance is okay. very cheap. So we are talking about di dividing the price of this type of. Uh, Transport by a, a node of magnitude of 10. Yeah. And then uh, it, it, it changed. Yeah. And it's already existing for the Volocopter. And Since one year, we have a, a, a certification to fly all around in Germany, man. So it's yeah. not a fancy thing for the right. future. So, and it's not only to create the aircraft itself, it's, it's more about creating the whole ecosystem. Okay. It's about air traffic management system, okay. about connectivity, autonomous things. And this is a real big thing for whole of the so mobility. So maybe we should start with that. Maybe we should start with that new line in the sand, that space between ground, this low space, the infrastructure. How, how far out is building that infrastructure? Because in my view, we can't do this until we get this sorted. Or but, am I wrong? But, but again, in a, in a lot of different cities, this infrastructure ex exists. Like in Dubai, for example. Or even in LA. LA, there's already 300 helipads uh, on, okay. on the ground that okay. need to be reactivated. Uh, but, uh, but the infrastructure exists. You need to build um, everything to charge your uh, electric batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, technology exists, but mm -hmm. you need to make the investments. Um, so a lot of things already exist. Okay. And when we talk about the first applications, um, there will be a pilot. Okay. Uh, so uh, everybody agrees that to go faster to the market, a pilot will be, will be there. Uh, at least in most of the so place. So not everybody agrees. Yeah. No. Yeah, right. So no. not everybody no, 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 agrees. No. So we started <laughs> five weeks ago the first full <laughs> autonomous flights, and already in Dubai, the uh, authority there has integrated that flight in the ATM. So we have a big screen while the, the first flight, official flight, you see all the commercial airlines on the screen mm. and all the volocopter included okay. in the system. So okay. they're really in front of including this connected mobility like drones also in the in the air traffic management. So, so you're saying so they're better at including this space and this space already together. Looking so at both of those perhaps together. Perhaps it, it has to come together in the in same system. 
So, so what, what's, are you guys want to make a prediction of when that's actually going to happen? Because so, 2020, or when are we really going to start to see, really? So it, it already started. Yeah. We think it could be many more tests in as little as three years. Okay. And you could have a commercial reality okay. at the end of five years. I like it, a and line then, in the And sand. then uh, the FAA said that they will uh, be ready to certify um, the first uh, electric uh, type of vehicle by 2020. Mm -hmm. And so by the time these, uh, these uh, companies will apply to be certified, you can say 21, 22. So mm -hmm. by 22, you could have a commercial service using this type of uh, certified okay. vehicle okay. into the uh, existing um, sky. Okay, uh? okay. And what about public safety and public acceptance? Do you think that this is something, well, you did all these research and you, what did you find? You gotta be something negative in there or something worrisome? Well, <laughs> I think one of the big questions there was autonomy, right? Okay. Is there a pilot or not? Um, yeah. exactly. And is that important for, yeah. for public acceptance? And most people said, oh, it's gonna work on the ground, it will work in the air, and isn't it true that most of the aircraft are on autopilot most of the time already? True. And isn't it also true that often it's a pilot that creates um, the problem? So um, automation is actually seen as a safety increasing okay. factor. Do, can, I, can I look out in the room and can I have a show of hands? How many people think autonomous is safer and are okay with that? <laughs> there you go. Good. Survey done. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So I think, but it's not only the safety, it's also the acceptance of the impact. Okay. So I think for us, for example, we want to do it in urban space. So it has also to be very low noisy okay. for the acceptance. Yep. And you don't want to have the whole uh, uh, air full of aircraft. You don't right. see any more the sun yeah. or something. Yeah. But the people think a little bit uh, from the uh, video, the fifth element where the whole yes. is full of exactly. that. And that's not. If you put all the cars yeah. on the ground in the air, yeah. you, you will don't see any because it's so yeah. separated. This is, is not a thing you will have fear for. So I think people want to see that flying car, you know, the fifth element back to the, they like the concept of that because Hollywood has created that in our minds. And I think looking at Aeromobile's car, it looks like the back to the future so, car. Oh, exactly, yeah. But I, I don't know how, I feel like this is more of a reality than that's more of a reality. I mean, it's, maybe it's I'm going to be a, a step by step. And just to come back on your point, in a city like San Francisco, yeah. we are talking about 500 to 1,000 um, uh, flying vehicles. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot, but at the end, not that not much. Not that many, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What kind of what kind of? Uh, I mean, you're well funded. Oh, go ahead, jump in. Yeah, but I think I'd just like to nuance that. I think that is the right vision and scale for the first application of vertical flight. Okay. But once we have a digital airspace, we have. Uh, technology standards for automatic systems. We have high power batteries and electrical motors. There's no end to the applications we could see. We can see the jet packs, we can see the individual uh, vehicles, and we could see them flying and also outside of the city. So I think it's going to open up for a wealth of innovation, yeah. which is also different than the kind of vehicles which we first do okay. and expect to be electrical, vertical takeoff and landing. No, I, I, so uh, yeah, I, I fully agree, and we also agree that uh, <coughs> autonomous would be much easier in the sky yeah. than on the yeah. ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the battle for autonomy uh, uh, has more chance to succeed in the air yeah. because uh, the environment it's it's easier to describe. Yeah. It's uh, the same uh, every, er, in every places, and there's already a lot of rules that are applying yeah. for uh, the, the current general aviation helicopters. Yeah. And commercial aviation. Yeah, so you can build, upon, augment that in a way with a new way to move into that space. And Alex, you said something earlier about doing infrastructure as a service. Yes. Which is interesting because we it took us 25, close to 30 minutes to walk from where we were over here, and I thought we need a multicopter. That would have been the first great thing, just to like zoom yeah. over here, right, and sit and land. But you talked a lot about infrastructure and public transportation. I mean, roads are more expensive, bridges yeah. are more expensive. So can you talk a little bit about where you think this could take us in terms of uh, easing traffic conditions and public transportation? So uh, we, we talk a little bit about infrastructure on demand sometimes mm -hmm. when we start with some point-to-point -point lines. But we can move this line to another point. On the weekend, we can bring them to the stadium where the football or soccer mm -hmm. game is. And under the week, we can bring them from the, from the airport to the inner city or like that. So. Uh, the thing is not about how much expensive is that aircraft, 
So the question is how much expensive is the infrastructure, infrastructure okay. on the ground? If you build a tunnel like Elon Musk from his f uh, from his office to the airport, yeah. it's a crazy thing though. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so much uh, uh, cost for the tunnel, the car uh, doesn't, doesn't any matter of the cost. So we think uh, we have to go into the air because there is no space more for new mm -hmm. infrastructure in mm -hmm. the urban space of mega cities is one yeah. thing. And um, outside it's also the same. You don't uh, kill the nature and the ground if you fly from one city to another with a, with a faster and aviation yep. thing. And you almost uh, don't need a road anymore. You yeah. almost don't need a road anymore. So yeah. we, we need no roads, then we need no wheels, you know? Yeah. And so, and, but, but even when you look at and traffic, uh, you look at the traffic, uh, the, the way it is in most of the city, there's three or four lanes, uh, and then it's very packed. But as soon as you add one dimension, you just need, a, uh, it's, it's like a, a doubling in, yeah. in, 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 yeah. uh, in, you know, in one click of, yeah. uh, of a second, um, the, the entire capacity. Yeah. So, and you're just adding what, not just one lane, but uh, 10 to 20 lanes. So there's almost like no, no we'll traffic anymore. Yeah, that, and that, that's going to help a lot. Yeah. With a lot of pollution and just and time, more uh, yeah. But basic, basically, th there's a business model right now yeah. about this air mobility uh, because the the minute that we spend mm -hmm. stuck in traffic as a price, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and yeah. The, the first um, uh, flying cars that we are talking about yeah. had <laughs> difficulties to fly yeah. basically because there was no business model or the business model that was associated was uh, around general aviation okay. and general aviation is kind of a uh, a d a dying um, uh, activities or uh, yeah. the private plane. Private plane. E exactly. Uh, so here, as a, as we have a different business model, mm -hmm. uh, then it, it's starting to make sense again, and then all the, the major players, all the investors, are, are willing to uh, disrupt yeah. and, and make a new business. Right, because we have Daimler with Intel, Daimler and Intel backed our yeah. with you guys. You're Airbus, so you got your own money, right? And and so, what kind of what kind of uh, companies in this area are you looking to invest in? A part of the ecosystem or the infrastructure to build that out. I know you have a question there. And and then uh, and so as as we yeah. we just made our first investment okay. into a, a drone okay. a cargo company. Okay. Uh, so um, it's it's drone, in between a drone cargo. A, a drone cargo. Okay. It's uh, it's uh, in the range of two tons to ten tons. Okay. Uh, but it's so it's competing for the, for the same type of business. Okay. Uh, so no pilots. Okay. Uh, AV payloads. Okay. And then point to point deliveries, dr cargo at mm -hmm. the beginning, but uh, later on passengers. Okay, so is is commercial is pa is cargo going to come before passengers? And I can't go. I'm not going to be able to go out and buy a multicopter or a plane because they're going to be too expensive. So how am I going to get to make my life better in these in this urban mobility? Because that's going to be expensive. Three forty is a lot. I think the uh, <laughs> the value of time is up is individual. Okay. So sometimes you'll have a great urgency to go somewhere, yes. and you'll be willing to pay more. When we asked people, they said, okay. you cut my travel time in half, yeah. I'll pay twice as much okay. as the alternative. Am I, but is that, is that going to be something we're, as consumers, going to own? Or is it going to be more like an Uber where we hail it and service. hop in it? The service. service. Yeah. So you think the urban future of urban air mobility is going to be more like a service and not so that, that's what we see yeah. one. Right, okay. right now with cars. And less and less people own cars. Yeah. Uh, and so the model that we are looking is uh, no pilots, yep. uh, electricity, so mm -hmm. cheaper. Um, yeah, multiple people, so you share the costs. Mm -hmm. And so at the end, so the, the cost of your travel yeah. will not change that much from what it is today. It's mm -hmm. got just going to be in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the automation is key to democratize the service because you get the pilot out, you can do a one-seater, mm -hmm. you can do a two-seater, okay. and you have less costs to share. Yeah, that's true. Right? So the, the most economic will be a bigger one that's all full, okay. but the most realistic is a smaller one without a pilot. And okay. so that's why the value of autonomy in also in scaling it and democratizing and gaining public mm -hmm. acceptance is so important. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I'm gonna, you may not want to answer this, but uh, is, the vol is the multi-copter going to be that look and maybe somebody else will come up with something similar versus that flying car look of Aeromobile? Wh or so we have I two. Okay. One has wings <laughs> that can yeah. tilt. Okay. Right, single seat. Okay. It takes off and flies. And then it goes. Okay. Um, but it has a wing in which extends the range. Okay. And speed. Okay. Um, and then there is a multi-copter. Okay. Similar okay. to that, but a four-seat vehicle, which we're developing in Germany. Okay. Um, and and that is a that can carry more people, right? Okay. So it can add more capacity. Okay. 
And can you see something like that in an on-demand mode? Absolutely. All okay. of that, in terms of how we will consume it, mm -hmm. uh, the vehicle doesn't matter. Okay. I like this. I'm um, sorry, Airmobile's not here, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so the, the, I guess the last question is, um, what's going to be the biggest barrier? What's going to stop this? I mean, if we screw this up, is it going to set us back, you know, 20 years on the urban air mobility? Or what, what's going to stop us? All this alarm over AI, you know, so. Nothing. Nothing's going to stop Nothing us. Nothing can yeah. stop Anything? us. Anything? No. I, I, I was just stuff. overhearing a really cool panel on cybersecurity, right? Oh, yeah, okay. And there's so much going on yeah. on this topic. It's a topic that's of concern here, yeah. hacking and, yeah. and so forth. But there's... Uh, so much awareness and there's so much happening in government, public to private partnerships, mm -hmm. which are no longer talking about doing it or not doing it. They're talking about how to, miti how to mitigate and how to handle, okay. uh, not whether or not to do things. Also so the, the authorities are driving this. It's not yeah. okay. we are fighting against the authorities. Uh, we are a customer of uh, Dubai Authority okay. uh, Roads of Transportation, so they hired us to do this for them, so it's we don't battle against the authorities. They know that it's coming. Yeah, this field of uh, uh, mobility is coming, and they, everybody's preparing for that. Okay. The whole world is preparing on, on this topic. So and nothing can stop it. What do you think, Francois? And then the question is uh, not is it going to happen or not. Mm -hmm. It's more when. Uh, and right now, okay. as it's a, a very emerging subject, we yeah. see many different paths, um, yes. autonomous or pilots, okay. um, electric or hybrids, mm -hmm. one seat versus multiple seats. Um, open area or, or, or cities, mm -hmm. but, and, but it's just multiple paths to achieve what we are all looking for. Yeah. It's a on-demand mobility, one passenger, very cheap, okay. um, and uh, yeah, a new way of uh, transportation. Okay. And I think we, we have also in the future a lot of these different things. It's yeah. not, we have yeah, so one thing, who yeah. uh, who not so be one we thing. have a lot of different missions, mm -hmm. and so for uh, different missions we have perfect aircraft. So mm -hmm. Th Then there's another topic which is interesting, is what, what happens <laughs> If we all get autonomous cars, right. what happens if that Hyperloop tunnel yeah. actually yeah. gets drilled? Yeah. You know, um, but then when you think about transportation, mm. it's one of these things which we want to use more and more and more, yeah. right? So um, actually, congestion doesn't disappear just because we have more capacity. People go more, right. right? We've right. seen air traffic. That's you right. know, people travel more when the price comes down. Mm -hmm. We go more to Asia. We go mm -hmm. more to the U.S. And so the more mobility options we can create yeah. for people, it just creates better options, better exactly. life, yeah, right? I agree. So it's not one over the other, but for sure, all of that's happening on the ground as well, will impact also uh, the pathway for aerial mobility. And I think it is about adoption and acceptance and, and having everybody want to move. I mean, Ford has done a lot with mobility and changing, and changing a lot of the ways that we actually think about our car and being a part of owning a car versus just taking a piece of a car. So I, I, I like the idea of this. I don't I don't like the hype around it. So because I do think it's three years out in reality, right? So it would be better to make people be excited about something that they can actually use versus a flying car that you can't actually be a part of. <laughs> and, 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 and for some reason, we think that uh, the sky has to, has to be much safer than, okay. than the road. Uh, the, um, every year, there's approximately five or 600 people dying mm -hmm. of, um, of uh, aircraft crashes. Mm -hmm which is very few. Yeah. Um, at the end, with this new type of air mobility, um, it's going to be probably a mix of the, the uh, aircraft safety with the road safety. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't think anything related to that, that acceptance that they're going to block that new mode of transportation to happen. I saw new research just yesterday from a US think tank that says, open up the market for autonomous cars now and save <laughs> more alive because it fast forwards the implementation of autonomy. Yeah, yeah. And it's same here, you know, um, even something that's not as safe as what we have in aviation today will still save more life. It yeah. takes people off the streets in dangerous cars. And that's about autonomous. If you have a that's demonstration right. line, you have 20 aircraft flying two years without any mm -hmm. people inside autonomous. And then you trust it to sit in. If you see two years flying mm -hmm. with no people, yeah. you can <laughs> trust it. If you start with a pilot in a new thing, it's more scary. So yeah, perhaps that's true. We will see first full autonomous and pilot. We don't know. What's, what markets do you think are going to go here first? We know Dubai is set up, but where do you, is it going to be country by country? Or uh, what, what do you think? How are they going to line up? Hmm. That's a tough one, right? 
I think there's no city too small, there's no city too big, but what the, the way you can think about is where is the value of the new mobility highest? So that's where you go first. Right. So that's where the congestion is yeah. worse, so those are where big the cities. pollution is noise mm -hmm. is highest. Mm -hmm. And so I think that can help you uh, think about places. Um, and for sure, uh, some of the new markets in Asia yeah. is, uh, is high on that list. Yeah, and the high adoptability as well. Yeah? And also the first things will be not only to solve a big problem, mm. but where is a easy surrounding, so a safer surrounding, Perhaps they have some demonstration mm -hmm. over a, a lake or something else uh, than over a, in, a, in a square city. So it starts with some demonstration plans and then it will... Okay, my last drop. question, because we're almost out of time, is when can we get in one of your multi-copters? For me? Yes. Now. Uh, <laughs> and then I we're think gonna... uh, between three and five years we okay, will have Okay, three to five years. Okay. The first uh, demonstration plan where really with public people can use it. Okay, for and sure. do, where do you think that will be? Does Somewhere in the world. Somewhere <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, with your two? I echo that, three to five years. Three to five big. years. And what do you think as the investor? Yeah, I think uh, 20, so as an investor, I yeah. want to invest okay. uh, with, um, with uh, a, a good knowledge of the time, yeah. so of a return of investment. And so now we are at the good time where three to five years, around five okay. years, we're gonna have these uh, vehicle making some business creating some, uh, some cash okay. flow and revenues okay. and having a, a better understanding of, uh, of the market size. Okay. Um, and so 2022, 2023 okay. uh, makes a, lo a lot of sense for a lot of people. Did you guys hear that? 2022 or 2023, you can tweet it. Yeah. And that's it, <laughs> I think we're good. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>